I want us quickly to turn to the book of Joel. Joel 2.25. I believe everyone I should have mastered and memorized that chapter by now. Hallelujah, somebody. It's a chapter that doesn't need introduction. It's a chapter that reminds you how God shall restore that which the enemy has eaten in your life. God is restoring the wasted years of your life. And it's come from the book of Joel. Hallelujah. You see, before the, we even read, let me say something about Joel. The name Joel means Jehovah is God. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Jehovah is what? Is God. No matter the situation, no matter what you are passing through, Jehovah remains Jehovah. In your valley, Jehovah is Jehovah. In your struggles, Jehovah still remains Jehovah. In your troubles, Jehovah still remains Jehovah. In your persecution, Jehovah remains Jehovah. In your troubles, Jehovah is still Jehovah. What is it that you are passing through? What is it that has been tormenting you? What is it that has taken you away from the presence of God? I want to remind somebody that Jehovah remains Jehovah. No matter the situation, no matter the troubles of your life, no matter the storms that you are passing through, Jehovah is Jehovah. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. 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 No matter how bad it can be, Jehovah is Jehovah. Is your Jehovah in the valley? Is Jehovah in the dry situation of your life? Is Jehovah in the desert of your life? Is Jehovah in when, when everyone has looked down on you? He remains Jehovah at the mountain of your celebration, at the mountain of your breakthrough, at the mountain of your celebration. Jehovah remains Jehovah. Joel means Jehovah is Jehovah. Jehovah is your God. Whatever you are going through, hold on to your Jehovah. He will carry through you. Hold on to your Jehovah in that storms of your life that has tormented you, that has put you down. Just know that Jehovah is Jehovah. What does Joel mean? Can I hear the congregation tell me, Jehovah is God. Jehovah is God. Hallelujah. Brothers, can you quickly read Joel 2.25? And I will just do the exhortation briefly. And I will allow the woman of God also to come and do another 10 minutes. I will do a 10 minutes and she will come and do a 10 minutes. Ish. Joel chapter number 2 is 25. The word of the Lord says, So I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust, my great army which I sent among you. Listen, God is saying, He will restore that which the locust have eaten in your midst. That which she is sent, the locust has eaten. Listen to this. Those of you that understand what power is in the locust, a locust is just a minor small insect. But when it attacks, it attacks in full. Hallelujah, somebody. When it attacks the vegetables, where there was green, they will be white. Whatever color you can call it, it shall be plain. Because when locusts invade an area, the Bible says what the locust has eaten, what the locust has left behind, the palm worms shall eat, and what the palm worms have left behind, the caterpillars shall eat, and what the caterpillars have left behind, the canker wings shall eat. It means there is eating after eating, there is destroying after destroying, there is removing after removing. Your life it shall be reduced to bear. Am I speaking to somebody? Now, what are what causes the cacaoins? What causes the locust? What causes the caterpillar to eat in our life? It is your sin that causes. 
is the caterpillar to descend on you. I know somebody. It is your sin and your star of life that causes the caterpillar to come down. Your sin will cause caterpillars to come and eat you. Your drinking will cause caterpillars to come down and eat you. Your polygamy will cause your, the, 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 the lock after the tanker worms to come down and eat you. If you are a drunkard, if you like to drink that bottle of beer, you could have had money, you could have had wealth, they will start drinking you down. They will start eating you down. Where the locusts have left, the palm grains come through. They will come and chew. Where they leave you, the caterpillars will come through. And the caterpillars will cool you. Where the caterpillar has left, the canker worms will come and finish you up. Brothers and sisters, as much as you get excited about the restoration, as you get excited, there is a part that you have to play. There can never be a restoration if there's no repentance in your life. Amen. Amen. I'm speaking to somebody. Amen. First and foremost, repentance has to come. You have to reach a point where you realize you're living in sin. And because you have your sin, the caterpillars have been feeding on you. The locusts have been feeding on you. The pomegranates have been feeding on you. The caterpillars have been feasting on you. What am I saying? Your sin causes everything in your life to be eaten up. Quick, listen to this. You know, you have heard the, 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 the retirees. You know what I mean? Somebody has worked for his years and suddenly he has gone into his retirement age and suddenly they have paid him a full package. He is suddenly a rich man. And when he receives his money, the first thing he thinks of he is, is his girlfriend. The first thing that he thinks of is his girlfriend. The first thing that he thinks of it is the bottle of beer. The first thing that he thinks of is to abandon his children and his household. He leaves everyone. When he's living in sin, he starts drinking his money. He starts spending his money. Before long, all the money will be gone. What am I saying? When you receive your money, when sin has come in your way, when you have received your package and you decide to invest it in the pot of power, the pot will eat you, the locusts will eat you, they will be finishing you. When they be saying, darling, when they're saying, darling, and you are holding them down, they are draining that money that is upon you. Buy me a beer, buy me a car, buy me this and this, slowly they are draining you down, slowly they are bringing you down, before long that fat retirement benefit shall be gone you will remain to nothing then you turn around and realize there is your home, then you turn around and realize there are children the caterpillars have eaten you now I'm speaking to somebody it is your sin that causes the caterpillar to come and chew and feed on you what is it that you are doing what is it that you are living check your lifestyle what is it that is not right in your life uh, that invites the lo locust uh, that invites the power grade, uh, that invites the caterpillars uh, that invites the counterweights uh, to come and chew you down it is sin listen listen in, in, in Luke chapter 11, Luke chapter 11, 15, is it 12 to 15? We hear the story of the prodigal son. The prodigal son came to a point where he went to his father and said, Give me my share. Hello, somebody. Give me my share. And the father gave him his share. And the Bible says he went to a far land. In that far land, the Bible says he became loiters. He became careless. He all his money on girlfriends, on fun life. And you know what? When you have money in your pocket, there are friends that surround you. There are people that are around you. And they will be praising you. And they will be training you. And they will be, oh, 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 oh. They will be eating that which you have. And before long, you realize it's all gone. Did the same thing happen to the prodigal son? That which he had carried, that which we will spend in hotels, that he was spending on women, that which he was spending on entertaining people, suddenly it was gone. And the Bible says there was famine in the land. 
He was without a job. He had no coin on him. And everyone that surrounded him deserted him. When they finish you, they will desert you. When they finish you, they will run away from you. When they finish you, you have no bearing upon their life. When you can't buy them a beer, they don't need you. You are a nobody. The tanker worms have drained you down. The tanker worms have finished you. Am I speaking to somebody? So be careful before you rejoice and say, restore me, restore me. Get to a point where you say, Lord, I want to repent of those things that I have been doing, that which is not right in the presence of God. I'm speaking to somebody. And the Bible says that the prodigal son reached the point where he found himself waiting in a piggery. In where? Here he was reduced to the very lowest level. He started looking after the pigs. He started eating the food pig. What the pig ate is what he ate. And if you know the pig language, and if you know the pig wise, they delight to be in the mud. They delight to be in the dirt. He was dirty throughout. This is why they said, don't fight pig. Don't fight the pig because it will bring you down in the mud and it will throw you into the mud. It will cover you in the mud. It will be joined the mud because that's where it lives. Hello, somebody. So you are not a pig. You are not destined for a piggery. You should not be having the perfume of a pig. When you are in sin, then come a point when you should realize you are not a pig. Hello, somebody. Shake yourself and say, I'm not a pig. It's time to shake yourself. It's time to arise and say no to the pig life. And say no to the life of living in a piggery. And say no to be living in the dead. And say no to be living in the sin. And arise. When the young man arise, he said, I have sinned to my God and to my father. I will go back to my father's house because in my father's house even the workers have enough to live and waste. Hello somebody. They have what? Enough to live on and to waste. And the young man came to a point where he made a decision. I'm going back. May you reach a point where you should make a decision and say, I am leaving this bakery. I'm not a pig. I cannot continue living in sin. I cannot allow the locust. I cannot allow the pomegranate. I cannot allow the caterpillars and the cacaworms to keep eating me and to reduce me to this level. It is a point of repentance. It's a point of saying, I'm turning around. I am going back to the house of my father. And when you go back to the house of the father, the Bible says his father was waiting for him. His father was on a hill waiting for him. And when he saw him come, the Bible says the father ran to him. The father kissed him. Despite him being contaminated with the perfume of a pig. <laughs> a pig smells. <laughs> Despite what was on his body, the father was able to go and have him and take him and kiss him. And he brought him and he announced the presence of the son coming back. And when he announced the presence of the son coming back, he commanded that let him be put in a jacuzzi. Let them put boom. Let them put boom. Let them put everything there. Let him be washed with every spirit of a pig that had been on him. Let him come out clean. Let because he went and confessed before his father. It's time to wash you. It's time to be purged. It's time to be cleaned. When you run back to your father's house, you will be cleaned. Mm. Am I speaking to somebody? May the Lord wash you of every infirmity that you may have got contaminated into. Because you have made a decision to turn around. It's the turning around that will restore you back to the Father. It's not just being washed. He was not just washed. He was not just cleaned. He was retained back in his 
father's house. The father said, give him a new coat. May the Lord give you a coat because you have come back in his home. You have decided to come back. May he give you new shoes. May he give you sandals because you have decided to come back in his home. May a new garment be released your way. And the Bible says, a ring of authority was put back to him. Everything that the locusts are eaten out of his life, everything that the, the, the pama worms are eaten out of his life, everything that the caterpillar are eaten out of his life, everything that the cockroaches are eaten out of his life was given back to him. God can restore you back to where you were before if you only can turn around. It's only the turnaround situation that can restore you. There is no restoration if there is no repentance. Repent. Tell your neighbor, repent. Yes. Say no to the piggery. No. Say no, you don't belong in the piggery. You are not supposed to be smelling like a pig. You are not be supposed to be having a meal with a pig. You are not be supposed to be sitting on the same table with a pig. You belong in the house of a God. You are a king. You are a king. Let the Lord prepare a table for you. Where people shall rejoice you. Where people shall celebrate you. And there's a party waiting for you. When the prodigal son returned back, there was a party. There was a celebration. You will be celebrated because you have returned in the house of God. It's time to repent. Hello, somebody. And my ears will be tender, and that which the air cut locusts will eat, uh uh, the, it cannot be given back to you until you do what? You repent. Restoration comes with repentance. May you repent in every area of your life. It's not time to look down on yourself, it's not no time to say, eh, hey, in a hey, what, what. Doesn't matter how long you have been born again, whether you have been born again for 20 years, whether you have been born again for 20 days, the Lord can restore that which went missing in your life. The Lord is in the business of restoration. And when the Lord restores you, he will give you everything back. You will be restored. Paul, a murderer, a destroyer, was restored back. And Paul was able to say, I have run my less. May you run your less in Jesus' mighty name. Because the Lord has restored you. The Lord has favored you. That which went missing in your home, the Lord has given it back to you. It is a time of restoration. Wasted years. Say no to the pig life. Amen. Amen. Say no to the what? To the pig life. There can never be restoration as long as you keep hanging around with pigs. If you keep moving around with pigs, you keep moving in that anointing of a pig. But when you shake yourself and turn around, God is standing by the door. God is standing by the mountain. God is, he has people that are waiting to come and bath you, to come and change your smelling garment, to come and give you a new garment, to come and give you new shoes, and to give you a ring of authority. That is meant for you. Come back in the house of God. Shake off the pig's life. God wants you. He has a divine purpose for you. Come back in the house of God. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. 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 God is in the business of restoring those that have gone away from him. I said I will go in just an exhortation. I want to call upon the woman of God to come and just also bless us for the next 10 minutes. It's a day of a double food, a double preparation, a double anointing on the table. Shall we welcome the woman of God and the house? Hallelujah.